I want to show you the diagram here that illustrates exactly where Jody Arias stabbed her ex-boyfriend, Travis Alexander, including a wound. The medical examiner says pierced Alexander's heart. In all, more than, gosh, two dozen knife wounds, including a slash on the victim's neck from ear to ear. And on top of that, he was shot in the forehead. Medical examiner Dr. Kevin Horn says he found evidence on Alexander's hands that show he may have been fighting for his life. Let's get back. There were several photos of him, and the last one that we have is him sitting in the shower. And that's when I think it happened. He was sitting down, looking up at you. What did you do? And this knife has penetrated that cartilage and gone through the sac that surrounds the heart. He was kneeling down in the shower. I don't remember him. If he, like, if this is his shower and the sink is over here, I was like right here taking pictures. What went wrong? Did he say something to you? Were you angry about something? Were you frustrated? What was it? In the case of an assault with a knife or an edged weapon, you can have uh, cuts or, or, or um, uh, incised injuries to the backs or the palms or the backs of the forearm, and it's consistent with someone trying to either grab the knife or for, uh, um, uh, fend off wounds. Or does that wounds. tell you, or at least in terms of time, does that indicate whether or not there was at least enough time for Mr. Alexander to attempt to defend himself and then get these other wounds to the hand? With this wound to the heart, he, he should have been able to get his hands up and <clears throat> attempt to defend himself. If he was in a seated position when this wound was inflicted, would he have the ability, even though this was inflicted, to get up and walk somewhere or move quickly somewhere, as a matter of fact? Yes. And the way you described it, uh, by necessity, the person would have to be conscious and alive, correct? Yes. Except Travis was screaming. He was screaming. He was screaming. Travis was screaming the whole time. He wasn't screaming like a girl. He was just like, like he was in pain, like he was like shocked, like, oh, you know. Would blood come out of the mouth, the ears, or, or just out of the chest area? If the lung is nicked, they can cough up blood. Um, if you uh, have blood going into the throat area, and he does have you know, throat injuries as well, which we'll talk about, um, all of those can cause coughing up of blood or loss of blood out of the mouth and the nose. I remember putting my hand on his back because he was on his, all four of his knees. He was like on his knees like this, doing something like this or something like, I don't know. This is another stab wound of the back part of the skull behind the ear, so there's bone underneath there. He was holding his head. I think he was in shock. He was sort of using his legs, but he wasn't standing up. Wow, he's like, I can't feel my leg. really freaked out of my mind. This person's alive at this point, according to you, right? He yes. was still alive at the time yes. this was inflicted. Yes, but uh, my examination did show uh, that the jugular vein and the carotid artery on the right side were both cut. Do you... And I, looking at this, how, how deep is this wound that we have here? Uh, it goes all the way back to the spine. Uh, it passes through um, the airway, so the windpipe is cut through. Let me stop um, you there. When it passes through the airway, does this individual, as it's going through there, lose, lose the ability to scream at that point or not? 
It's uh, below the larynx, below the voice box, so yes. Oh, he wasn't talking or saying much, but I could tell he was breathing. He seemed like he was breathing calmly, I think. He wasn't like, he was just there. I don't think this person could have had a purposeful activity, meaning I don't think they could have raised their arms and attempted to defend themselves. He wasn't really moving, though. He was just standing, staying kind of still on the floor. He has two major vessels in his throat that have been cut. Uh, he's going to lose a great deal of blood very quickly. He's going to lose consciousness within seconds, likely, and then die a few minutes later. Travis was bleeding everywhere. He was bleeding everywhere. Well, after you lose blood, you lose the ability to provide oxygen to your major organs, including your brain and your heart. Um, in this case, uh, the first thing that would happen would be dizziness, followed by loss of consciousness, and then death. He was starting to just get weaker and weaker. He was still, like, able to move his, like, he was, he was all, I guess he was all conscious up here, sort of, still. But he wasn't, like, on his leg or on his knees or on his feet. He wasn't walking. It cut this one a little, but not as much. This is where it really went. I don't know how it happened that all these other fingers were missed, but this one, maybe that, I don't know. I don't know how deep it was, but my finger hurt for a long time. I just can't fit a ring on here. Okay. It's a bigger size now. It's pretty, it's pretty obvious how that happened. It happens when a knife slips through someone's hand because of blood. It's slippery, and it cuts. was still alive, still alive. He wasn't moving a lot, but he was still alive. I could see that he still was still alive. And he was still alive. He was still conscious, even. He was still, like, conscious and still alive. And Do you have an opinion as to the wound to the neck, whether or not he was alive at the time that that was uh, rendered, if you will? I believe he was. There's a great deal of hemorrhage associated with that. And was he alive with regard to the one to the chest that we've been talking about? Yes, I believe he was.
um, when we moved to Palm Desert, she started working at the California Pizza Kitchen and then eventually got a second job. Um, let's see, the, the relationship was, uh, was slowly deteriorating over the summer of 2006. I saw a lot of changes in Jody. She became a bit of a different person than um, I had known previously. As she got more involved with prepaid legal, she became um, less responsible to, uh, to the household bills. Um, I think that she had thoughts of, uh, of succeeding in prepaid legal and being able to support herself through those efforts. And um, it didn't quite seem to be the case. The house eventually uh, foreclosed in the following year. I wasn't jealous of anything. I was a little bit envious that he was going to Cancun, but that wasn't the reason. Like, I really needed to move on. Mm -hmm. And the last... What prevented you from moving on? Nobody was preventing you from moving on. Well, <clears throat> the only person preventing me really from moving on was myself. Mm -hmm. And until I made that step. I know if you had never met him, you probably would still be alive. That's true. Yeah. I, I complimented her on being very feisty and I was kind of referring to she's she's a lot stronger than she looks.